Good morning. So good to be here this morning. It's a real privilege. I'm very blessed to be able to bring this message to you this morning. And I want to re- thank Liz and Kat and the whole team for, for just setting that up so beautifully. And I loved that worship thing. It was great, wasn't it? Just kind of looking at the different... I loved what Liz said about being a muddle and like worship helps to put us together again. So anyway, that wasn't part of the sermon, but <laughs> I like it. Okay, so um, I'm continuing with this dedicated series. In a couple of weeks, we've got this special dedication service coming up. Um, So I'll be talking a little bit more about that. But my title today is taken from that song. It's Take My Life. I don't know about you, but some of these songs are really hard to sing. They are really, really challenging. And I think it depends sometimes what we're thinking of, who we're talking to when we say, take my life. Because maybe we're feeling like, don't shoot. It's like that. Sometimes it feels like that, maybe. Or could it be that our loving, kindest of all Lord is reaching a hand to us and saying, come on, and we're going, yeah, take my life. Take me where I need to go, because actually you know better than me. So I want to think about this concept today of worship in a broader sense to what we perhaps associate with worship. So there was lots in, in, the, in your associations there to do with um, majesty, reverence, you know, thinking about God's goodness and perhaps we think about singing. I thought someone might say song when it got to S. <laughs> um, we think about singing, we think about being together with God in formal services like this. But we're going to just take a slightly broader view on it today. So if Pete, thank you for doing the slides, Pete, could go to the next slide. Okay, maybe you saw in the notes on Friday and you thought, what's Bananarama got to do with, <laughs> with church? But I want to talk about a couple of things said by these people. Firstly, Bananarama in the 1980s. It ain't what you do, it's the way that you do it. <laughs> it ain't what you do, it's the way that you do it. And that's what gets results. That's what they sang together with Fun Boy 3. Um, And, you know, they were partly right because actually what we do is important (laughs) as well. But today I want us to focus on the way that we do things. The way that we do things, what our motivation is. What our motivation is in worship, whether that is sung worship or whether it is um, worship in this broader life sense. So let's come to Brother Lawrence now. Does it, have any of you heard of Brother Lawrence? Quite a number of you have heard of Brother Lawrence. I love Brother Lawrence. He was a 17th century French Carmelite monk. And um, he was a big, kind of ungainly guy in the monastery. And um, he tended to drop things and be a bit clumsy. And so he would be relegated quite often to the, to the more menial tasks in the in the monastery, including peeling potatoes. So he peeled a lot of potatoes. Anybody here who's peeled any potatoes this week? Excellent, excellent. So we can all relate to that. We're in good company with with Brother Lawrence. But he said some beautiful things because as he peeled potatoes and did other menial tasks, he learned how to do everything for the love of God. He called it practicing the presence of God. Such a beautiful phrase. Practicing the presence of God. I want to pause there and see if we could just practice the presence of God right in this moment. Perhaps we could just close our eyes. And it's knowing that God is here with us and it's knowing that God is love and that he knows us all completely, he loves us all completely. 
So just breathe that in one more moment. And open our eyes. Doesn't have to take long to practice the presence of God. So, but he, he used to say that he could just, even picking up a blade of grass from the ground for the love of God, that was worship. It's enough, he said, that I just pick up a blade of grass from the ground for the love of God. So there's something about learning, and I'm just a beginner. So please don't think I'm standing up here saying I've got all this dust. Learning to practice the presence of God, learning to do everything we do for the love of God. It's challenging, but it's possible. Let us go to the Bible. I want to start with quite a sobering um, verse, yes. So I've got three points, good Baptist style. <laughs> three points, so about our worship. And again, I'm thinking about worship, but I'm also thinking about the broader meaning of worship. That our worship be considered and not casual. So the way we live our lives be considered and not casual. And I'm going to start with quite a sobering verse. So Pete, if you bring up the next slide. The Lord was pleased with Abel and his offering, but he rejected Cain and his offering. Ouch. Um, yeah, just go back to that, the previous one. Thank you, Pete. So this, sorry, I should have told you a bit about the context. So Cain and Abel were brothers, and um, God had asked them, given them instructions how to worship him. And when it came to it, Cain brought some vegetables. Abel brought some meat. I'm not going to go into the whole vegetarian thing at this point. <laughs> but God was pleased with Abel's offering. Um, but it says that he rejected Cain and his offering. That's a strong word. That's scary. Is that not scary? That's a uh, don't shoot moment. But you see, God looked into Cain's heart, as it says in the next slide. People look at the outward appearance. Maybe, maybe Cain's Offering looked pretty good. You know, maybe there were some shiny peppers and tomatoes in there and it was gleaming. But God, the Lord, looks at the heart. And when the Lord looked at Cain's heart, eh, it wasn't worship, in it? That's scary. Maybe. Maybe. It says that, bear in mind that God gives Cain another chance. He says, if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? God knew that it was in Cain's capacity to do the right thing. And it is in all of our capacity to worship in the way that God wants. Every single one of us, no matter how small, broken, feeble you feel, God never asks us to do something that we're not able to. That's good, isn't it? That's a relief. That's a relief. So it was within Cain's capacity to worship God as he'd been asked. But the implication is that Cain did it as a sort of... Sorry, what time did I start? I started at 20 past, thank you. Cain did it as a, maybe a tick box exercise. Just like, oh, been told to do this, better get on with it. Get that out of the way and I can get back to work. <laughs> Or maybe he was a bit proud of his, oh, mine's looking pretty good. God's got to be pleased with that. <laughs> but God looked right into his heart and said, oh, I, I know you don't love me, Cain. There's no love there. And all you need to do is actually stop and th think about me for a minute and how, how great I am and, and love will rise up. It's not hard. <laughs> So we have a dedication service coming up in a couple of weeks. Let's be considered. Let's be considered with what we bring to dedicate to the Lord for a year. You know, if we haven't done it yet, 
I don't even mind if you get your phone out right now and put it in your diary. Wednesday night, I'm going to take an hour or two. If you've got more time than that, fantastic. But just let's take some time to consider what do I want to really dedicate to God for a year? And what will that look like? Let's get practical about it. Okay. So, I live with a couple of people who love strong coffee. <laughs> Particularly Jill and Harry love to make fresh, industrial strength coffee. And sometimes I come down the stairs and I'm met with this beautiful aroma. I love it. I absolutely love it. That is, God, that is how God feels when we do something for the love of God, whether it is sing a song in worship or whether it is peel the potatoes with that loving heart. It is like incense rising. That's what the Old Testament describes it as. Incense rising. There's a slide for that, I think, Pete. Thank you. I've not got my glasses on. May my prayer be set before you like incense. God leans down to you, Jules, when you've done some of them with a good heart, and he goes, oh, that's beautiful. That's so beautiful. And he does that for each and every one of us. Anytime we do something with a good, pure heart, for the love of God, for the love of each other, it's incense. Okay. My second point. Yeah. That our worship be personal and not prescribed. Eric Liddell, I don't have a photo of him, but you've got the, the pictures. No, I just got, yeah, that's fine. Thank you, Pete. Um, he was a rugby player and a sprinter, a Scottish guy, and he was a missionary. And he said, I believe God made me for a purpose, but he also made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. You've probably heard that before because it's quite a famous quote, but when I run, hang on, that's not in the lectionary. <laughs> that's not in the, you know, book of prayers or whatever. When I run, I feel God's pleasure. Interesting. What gives you a holy buzz? What is it that when you do it, you feel God's pleasure? Fiona, I just saw you. Walking the dogs. Walking the dogs, I'm sure, it gives Fiona a holy buzz. <laughs> that brings her to life like other things don't. It's very personal. It's very personal. And sometimes people struggle because, because their mouths get dry. <laughs> because maybe this isn't their kind of music or they don't really like other kind of church, church music or this church music or whatever. You don't have to like this music to worship God. You don't have to like any music to worship God. That doesn't matter so much. What really matters is that you love God the way that you can love God as you are. You bring yourself to God, who you are, who you are uniquely. So, what gives you a holy buzz? But all of this might be feeling a bit much for you this morning. Maybe you are just, just about hanging on. Maybe you feel like your faith is so small. You feel like a fraud sitting in church. I can't tell you how beautiful your worship is to God. When Jesus was in the temple and he looked around, he saw, a, he saw all these people putting their ostentatious gifts in the offering. But he also saw a widow, very poor, putting in just a coin or two, just the tiniest amount. And he said... He saw her. That's the first thing. He saw her. God sees you this morning, however you're feeling. 
And he said, she's put in more, different versions say more than everyone else. The message says more than everyone else put together. <laughs> she has put in more. So please don't let's judge each other. Let's not think, oh, that person only makes it to church once in a while. <laughs> For all you know, that person is putting in way more than any of us. <laughs> so let's not judge. But you might be that person today. You might be just struggling, just hanging on, barely hanging on. And it's not always the people we think are barely hanging on as well, let me tell you that. Sometimes it's the people who seem like they have got it all together. <laughs> God sees totally into our hearts. He sees what's going on. He loves us just as we are. And we bring the scrap of faith, no matter how small it is. He sees it and he loves it. It's incense. Incense rising to his nose. His and her wonderful nostrils. Time. Time is going on. A bruised reed he will not break. So if you're feeling that's you this morning. A bruised reed he will not break. A flickering wick he will not snuff out. It could be that for the dedication service, you're just going to commit to being alive for another year. Or you're going to commit to trying to believe in God for another year. Great. That's wonderful. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful smell to God's nostrils. Also, get help if it's that bad, please. Reach out. Right, I'm going to get to my third point now. Oh, that's the women's, that's the widow's mate one, yeah. Okay, third point, and I'll try to um, finish soon. So, generous, not grudging. Uh, there's a verse as well, please, Pete. Um, i just read it out. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And the root word, as you might know, for cheerful is hilarious. <laughs> God loves a hilarious giver. I was struck by Dave Whitman last week saying that going to Russia and um, uh, going to Russia, leaving people behind and learning a new language, it was, felt like almost no sacrifice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it reminded me of Jacob um, in the Bible who fell in love with Rachel, uh, if you remember the story. And Laban, her father, said, well, you can marry her if you work for me for seven years. I wonder how we'd feel about that these days <laughs> if we had to work for someone for seven years before we could marry them. And it was hard labor. He worked as a shepherd. But it's a beautiful verse. It says, Jacob worked seven years so that he could have Rachel. And the time seemed like only a few days to him because he loved her. Isn't that beautiful? It felt like a few days. I don't know about the next seven years when he had to um, stay for another seven years, but that's another story. Um, but... Love takes the, takes the slog out of sacrifice. So if something is feeling, oh, this is a sacrifice, we need to go back and steep ourselves in the love of God. If we fall in love with God, it takes the slog out of sacrifice. God doesn't actually want victim-like victim -like martyrs. <laughs> Stephen was the first martyr in the Bible, and it says his face shone. His face shone in love with God. I know I need to finish. So I will just finish with this, that God is generous. So let's be generous, but let's give the biggest thing we can give and still be happy about it. 
<laughs> let's not give reluctantly. Let's not overgive and feel resentful. Let's give what we've decided in our hearts to give and give it hilariously. God is generous. When, when God spoke to Adam at um, the very beginning, however you read this, um, he said, you know, you can eat of the fruit of the tree, of any tree in the garden, except one, except that one. I think sometimes we lose sight of the eye-watering width of God's generosity and love for us. There's one last slide, I think. Any tree except one. So as we're thinking about what we might dedicate to God, we can ask God, yeah, for, for guidance on that. But he might just say, what do you want to give? <laughs> because there's freedom. He gives us freedom in things. I am just going to conclude now. So, we're called to live lives of worship, and that's in a broad sense. And it's because God is worth it. God is worthy of our lives. It ain't just what we do. It's the way that we do it. It's our heart motivation. So let's worship God considerately. Giving thought and time to what? To the way we live our lives and what we devote to God. Let's worship God personally. Bring in your unique thing, the thing that gives you a holy buzz. But also bring in your real self, however broken you feel. And let's love and worship God generously, giving the biggest thing we can with a hilarious heart. And let's join with Brother Lawrence in practicing the presence of God and doing everything, everything, everything for the love of God. We are going to close with a song, Be My Everything. So if the band could come up, that'd be lovely. And just as we go through this, I'd invite us, just before we sing the song, I'd invite us just to settle our hearts before our God, our God who loves us more than we can ever imagine. To, to say to God, take my life, not in a scared way, but in a way that I can just place my hand in your hand, Lord, because I trust you. I know you love me. I know you want the best for me. Even if I don't understand some of the things that are going on in my life just now, I choose to put my trust in you. I choose to put my hand in your hand. Lord Jesus, come and settle this word in our hearts. Perhaps take a moment just to reflect over what I've said and over the whole service and just pick out one thing, one thing that maybe you feel God might be saying to you this morning. He wants to speak to all of us. And then just ask, Lord, let that word, let it just settle in my heart. Bring about change in my life and in the lives around me. Amen.